a storytelling adventure for our lead national correspondent, David Begno. Part of a new series we are putting together. You know David's always up for a challenge and he loves meeting new people. So we sent him to the airport and gave him a plane ticket. The destination was a surprise. And we told him, when you land there, find a story, oh, and you have to do it within 48 hours. Hmm. And David worked his magic. Here we go! Savannah, Georgia, this is where we're going. Go get myself some sweet tea. Here we go. This is gonna be like the amazing race of storytelling. Because as soon as I found out the surprise destination, they gave me just 48 hours to get there and find a story. Welcome to Savannah, y'all. Savannah is Georgia's oldest city, and it is famous for its 22 squares, pre-Civil War architecture, and of course, that good old Southern hospitality. John, man, I'm talking to my wife. I, I got to give you a hug, because it's almost like I know you. Nice to meet you. I'm talking to my wife right now. She <laughs> love your story. What's her name? Darlene. Let me say hello. Say hello, hello Miss Darlene. Darlene. So, in search of a true taste of Savannah, my team suggested we drop by Leopold's Ice Cream, founded back in 1919. And boy, did they line up a special greeter for me. David. Uh, are you Mr. Stratton? I am Stratton. Welcome to Savannah. Welcome to Leopold's. Mr. Stratton Leopold is the 80-year-old owner of this family-run institution, started by his father more than a century ago. He's not just a local star here in Savannah. He's a Hollywood one, too. Leopold has produced more than 20 films but this is what he says might be his sweetest achievement. This is the best. It's a food group. Mm. This was my first taste of Savannah. Okay. Where should I go next? Go to Olympia Cafe. Olympia Cafe. I'll go down there with you if you want. <laughs> Let's go. Let's, Let's go. Now look, I was expecting some classic Southern food. But Mr. Leopold took me to a fiery good Greek restaurant. Whoa! <laughs> Over some octopus and delicious pita, I learned about Leopold's fascinating life and fueled okay. up for the next part of our journey. Thank you. I hopped on the trolley with our tour guide, Gina. It was a great way to see some of Savannah's best views. We're one of the few cities east of the Mississippi that allow you to walk around with a cocktail in your hand. That's now a good know, shot. Now you know I'm going to be posting on Facebook. Oh, please. How you like Savannah? We just, we just got here. It's my first time, and I love it. We had the opportunity to meet people like Martin from Haiti. Moved here 19 years ago. Savannah was his first stop in the U.S., and he decided to stay. You know, of all the people we spoke to, I remember Mr. Leopold, the ice cream man, saying, David, you have got to meet Wilbert Boyce. So the next morning, we arrived bright and early, and look who we found sitting on the bench right outside the shop. Hello, Wilbert. My name is David Begno with CBS News. How you doing? Doing good time. Nice to meet you. Wilbert Boyce is 78 years old. He's a father of three, and he's been working here at the Barber Pole in Savannah since it opened 25 years ago. It's a busy spot for walk-ins. But for Mr. Boyce, the day moves at a much slower pace. Not because of his age, but because his craft is a dying one. Are you the only shoe shiner in Savannah? I'm the only one I know of. <laughs> I don't know nobody else shining shoes in Savannah. Why do you think that is? Mm, well, you know, but there ain't that many people getting their shoes shined, that's why. Is it because we're all wearing more casual clothes exactly. today? yeah. What does a nice, shiny pair of shoes say about a man? Hey, a man ain't saying nothing if he get up and, put the, and get dressed and his shoes ain't shining. <laughs> <laughs> Boyce discovered his craft at the age of 15 in his hometown of Decatur, Illinois, well before he moved south to Savannah. How did it come to be that you work here? I walked by one day and saw the shoe shine stand, and I came in and asked, you know, the proprietor if anybody was shining the shoes in there. Wasn't nobody shining the shoes, so he gave me the job. The job looks a lot different these days. Boyce spends a lot more time just sitting and waiting. 
than he does polishing. In fact, on the day we met him, not a single customer dropped by for an appointment or even stopped in to see the man who is believed to be the only shoe shiner left in Savannah. You think he'll be the last one? Probably. I wouldn't doubt it. I don't think nobody else is going to shine no shoes. You think some people think that shining shoes is beneath them? Of course they do. That's why ain't nobody doing it. How good a shoe shiner do you think you are? I'm the best. The greatest of all, all time. <laughs> the G-O-A-T. And you know, his customers just might agree. Good morning, sir. Mr. Chairman. Like the mayor of Savannah, Van Johnson. You good? You got time for me? Of course. He heard we were in town, and in between meetings the next day, he dropped on by. He told us he's part of the $100 Club. Right. It's a group of loyal customers, many of them attorneys, who pay $100 at the start of the year for unlimited shines. Turns out it was the mayor's idea. At the end of the day, um, these shoes look a whole lot better than they did when I came in here. So, do you want to retire? Any plans of retiring? I'm already retired. <laughs> but any plans of stopping shining shoes? I don't have no reason to stop. Well, if I stop, what would I do? Just sit, sit, sit at home and, <laughs> and watch TV all day? If you got to watch people pass by, you might as well do it here than at home. Exactly. And I'll make a $10 every now and then, too. <laughs> there you go. You got it. As the sun set over Savannah and my new friend headed home, I stood there thinking about all the history in this city and it made me grateful for people like Wilbert Boyce, who keep it shining just as bright as new. Well, get this, he said he wasn't gonna stop, but I called Wilbert last night and he said, David, I'm done. I need both hips replaced and he's gonna have it done, but he has decided to retire, that's it. So we checked with the mayor of Savannah and he said, David, we're gonna throw a retirement party for him. His customers are gonna be invited and people around town can come and wish him well too. Hmm, love it. I, I love the words of wisdom. Yeah. Uh, hey, a man ain't anything, nothing if he gets up and gets dressed and his shoes ain't shine. That's I, right. You gotta get those shoes shined every day. And if he's the GOAT, enjoy retirement. That's right. First Tom Brady, now him. <laughs> and also, David, you highlighting his work and giving him this recognition right before he yeah. retires. I mean, what a way to end a, a career. You're right about that. Great highlight to end it on. All right, David. So that's the first one in the bag. You're already on to your next yep. adventure. You're not going to tell us where you are, I guess, right? Yeah, I'm going to tell you. Providence, Rhode Island, baby. That's where oh. we're standing right now. We arrived this week. Yep. Yep, we arrived this week, and the first stop was a gondola ride. They sung to us, told us about the city. Then we had some great food. The Italian stuff is good around here. We heard, we tried it, and they were right, and we met some fascinating people. And let me tell y'all, the person who ends up being the main character in our next surprise adventure is someone who I darn near literally, almost literally, ran into on the street. That's the great thing <laughs> wow. about this. This is why I call it the amazing race of storytelling, because you got 48 hours. You better hope the people are available and want to tell you their story to find something good. It's a blast. Nobody better to do it than David. It's That's a right. different kind of 48 hours on CBS. Thanks, That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Nice Love job. It.